Hey, it's Jeremy here. I'm going to be showing you how to create your own vector brushes in Illustrator CC. So what I've got here, I did some charcoal um, scribbles on a paper and I scanned them in my computer. And what I did, I took it into Photoshop, I adjusted some of the contrast, some of the levels, and then I saved it as a TIFF and I brought it into Illustrator. So you can see now if I zoom in, um, it's got some of the details there and it's just got the black and white, which we want. And we can turn some of these into our own brushes. So I've got my brush panel here on the right. To open that, go to Window, then click on Brushes, and you'll get this panel up. So for default, you'll get some other ones, but I just deleted them. You can click this little drop-down menu and go Select All Unused, and then just press the bin icon down here, and it'll delete all the other ones you don't need. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to press Image Trace. But first, we can see on the left, it's a TIFF, and it's 600 PPI. Try and save it at a high PPI when you save it in. Or if you don't have a scanner, just take a photo with your iPhone or something and that will be fine. So I want to select it and we're going to click Image Trace. And now just let the computer process all the points and actions. And you can see now it's converted into like shapes. But we're going to play around with the settings a little bit. I'm just going to click this box up the left corner here. And we've got the Image Trace box up. And I'm just going to play around with this stuff. First, I'm just going to turn off Preview so it doesn't lag. I'm going to click this box off. Ignore White. Um, bump up the noise a little bit and then I'm going to put the paths a little bit up just like that and maybe put the threshold a little bit down and then press preview I'm going to zoom in a bit and then preview and you can see now it's getting a bit of that green, bit of that noise in there and we can bump up the noise as well to get a bit more details in there as you can see we get more specs which is pretty cool so yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm quite happy with how it's looking. So we're going to go and expand it. So go to the top left hand corner and just expand, click that. And now it's going to expand all the shapes and now it's we can use it as an object. And then now you can see I can select it all. It's grouped together, so ungroup, control shift G or command shift G. And now you can see everything's separated now. And we're just going to delete the parts that we don't want. just like that. And what we can do now, we can start grouping some of these together. So I'm just going to group this. So we can start grouping some of the brushes. Because you can see it's all in different pieces. Which is pretty awesome. So now what we can do, we can start making our own brushes. So first up, you want to make sure that when you're creating the an art brush, you want to make sure that it's at a small size. And we want to make sure that we want to straighten out our lines. So when you do your brushes, you want to make sure that it's straight so people can use it as a cool art brush. And then I'm just going to press P for the pen tool and select that and press Control 5. And now we have a guide here. And I'm just going to lock that guide by pressing Control, Alt, and semicolon. So now we have a guide there. And now I'm going to just drag one of these brushes. And what we usually do to try and make the art brush as high quality as possible. We try and straighten it up. So you can see it's a bit crooked. We want it to like become as straight as possible. So we line up with the guide. I select that, go to object, envelope distort and go with make it mesh. And this is a good way to straighten up without losing the quality. You can preview that. I'm going to bump up the, uh, the columns a little bit and yeah, that should be fine. So now we've created a mesh of this shape. And now what we can do is we can start moving these points up and straightening it, straighten, straightening it up just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it rough. So just play around with these points. You use a direct selection tool or press A. And you can see I can directly select all these points in this mesh and we can create some cool brushes. So that's kind of looking all right. So that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is you select the brush and we just drag it into the brushes panel, just like that. And you'll see you'll get three options. You'll get scatter brush, art brush, and pattern brush. First up, we're going to go for an art brush. So you'll get a box pop up and we can call this brush whatever. We can call it charcoal because that's what I used. And you'll see you'll get an option with the width. So on the moment, it's on fixed, but you can see I have my Wacom plugged in as well. So you can see you can use pressure, stylus, tilt, bearing, and rotation. So if I press pressure, when I start drawing with my artboard on my Wacom pen, it's going to adjust it, which is pretty cool. So we'll click that. 
And you can play around with these settings if you want, but I'm gonna leave it like that. And then usually you're trying to leave it on stretch to fit the stroke length. So if you're using a path, then the brush will go on the path at the right length. Um, and I try and just leave it on them. And you can change the direction if you want. I usually leave it on that. And with the method, colorization, you can see that there's tints, tints and shades and hue. Um, the best option is to go to hue so you can change the color of the brush itself. But if you want to just to overlay things, then you can just press tint and shades. But what we do is just press hue shift and then we'll just leave the other options just like that. Press OK. So now you can see we have this brush. And I'm just going to get my wipe, make on pen out. And I'm just going to click, click the brush and then press B and you can start brushing just like that. It's on gray. I'm just going to change the black. And you can see now the brush changes according to my pressure. Because I've set the sensitivity on the pressure, you can see we get some cool effects. Just like that. So we're going to just delete all those. But if it wasn't on um, the pressure, it would be different. So if I double click on the art brush, you can just go in and edit it. So I'm going to change it back to fixed because most of you probably don't have a Wacom. So just keep that in mind. Change it back to fixed and then I press OK. And now I can just create a path using the pen tool. And then click on the art brush just like that. And I can select it. I can change the stroke lower. I can make it bigger. Try not to make it too big because it starts distorting and looks ugly. So try and keep it like one or less um, points. And yeah, and we can also add it to shapes as well. Like this. So it's very handy. Brushes are awesome and it doesn't lag your computer. It saves the brush. You can get some cool texturing effects and it's really awesome. So we've got that one brush there and now we're going to make a pattern brush. So I'm just going to grab this other charcoal thing. I'm just going to drag it into the box and click on pattern brush. Just like that. And you see we have the same options. So you can put pressure on or just leave it on fixed. You can control some spacing here like that. And you can see we've got um, adjustments on the path. So we've got the corner here. Um, the lime and the breaks and stuff. So if we don't want it to be different, you click and you'll see the corners will be different. So usually try and aim for auto sliced and you can change this if you want multiple shapes on it. You can play around with the settings, click this and auto slice. So you can see this corner, it acts all the same. And then you can play around with this. You can add space to fit, stretch to fit or approximate path. Just use stretch to fit. And then for the method again, change it to hue shift so we can change the color and press OK. So now, same thing, we can click. And now we have these cool pattern brushes. So we can change the color really easy, just like that. And you can do some crazy strokes and you can get some cool patterns. You can even update the stroke as well, up, make it smaller or thinner, which is pretty awesome. So that's how you do a pattern brush. The next one is we're going to be doing is a scatter brush. So I'm just going to use another one of these circles that we've drawn here. I'm just going to drag that in and now we've got a scatter brush. So click that and now we've got a fair few options. So we've got scatter brush. We've got size, spacing, scatter and rotation. And you can see it's on fixed. Try and go for random so you get a more cool feel. And then what I usually do is I play around with these spacing um, parameters and you can see this is the maximum this is the minimum and you just play around with these parameters and then I change the option to path and then again colorization hue shift and I'm just going to press OK and you can see how it's up here now it's not as on the long side so I've got that brush there and I'm just going to go actually I'm just going to create a path click click select that path and select the scatter brush and you can see how it's get some weird effect so we can double click on it and we can see our effect take place. Click preview and we'll play around with it. And this is what I usually do to see how it's looking live. So a scatter brush pretty much gets your um, brush and it scatters it. You know, the sizing, it rotates it to create cool, you know, splash art arty effects or get some abstract, you know, backgrounds or whatever. So you can play around with this cool stuff and get some weird scatter effects like that, which is pretty sweet. And then press OK apply to strokes and then now whenever you make a stroke you can scatter it just like that which is pretty trippy so that's how you make those three brushes now the other brushes we're going to make is we're going to make a calligraphy brush so because it doesn't let you um, show it here you have to go to the drop down menu click that go to new brush and you can see we've got the other options we've got bristle and we've got calligraphic so calligraphic or however you say it so we're going to click that press ok 
As you can see, this is more simple. You can control the size, the angle. Um, this is particularly good if you're doing like calligraphy or typography or you're using um, a stylus or an Wacom, then it's much more better. Or maybe you're doing like comics or you're doing some like illustrative style, like an inking style, then this is really good for that. Um, instead of, you don't have to go into, you know, Photoshop, you can do it here, which is pretty sweet. So you can control the roundness, the angle, the size as well. If you want to get like a cool calligraphy style brush. And then as again, you can select which one you want, random or pressure. We'll select the pressure and then we'll test it out, see what it looks like. And then you can control the variation here if you want to get a weird effect. So maybe play with the roundness there and the sizing, just like that. And then press OK. So now I've got a calligraphy brush here. You can see the sizing. And then now I'm just going to get my Wacom out and press B for the brush tool. Click the calligraphy brush and then... And we can adjust the stroke as well. And you can see that we get this cool. So we can do some of the graffiti style stuff, which is pretty sweet. Just do my name. JM Signature. So yeah, that's what a calligraphy brush does. It's pretty sweet. I don't play around with that too much, but that's how you use it. And the last brush is a brittle brush. So do this again. New brush. And then go to bristle brush. So this acts like a paintbrush in real life. Um, we got, you know, round, blunt, all these different kinds of paintbrushes. If you're like an artist, you can get sort of the same effect, which is pretty sweet. And then you can play around with all this size, length, density, um, and get some weird effects, which is pretty cool. But obviously this will only work if you have a Wacom, um, or else it won't really look good if you're just using, you know, a normal pen tool and stuff like that. Um, which is pretty cool. So then you can see now it's created that just like that. And we can start using it. Just like that. So you can see, I don't really use this, but you can see you can get a cool like, uh, it tries to mimic the style of a real brush, which is pretty sweet. So that's how you got make your brushes guys. There's so many options. You can create brushes from real life or even, you know, charcoal, pastels, crayons, pens, felt tip, pencils, like whatever it is, you can create some awesome art brushes and create some really cool effects. So that's, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Leave a comment below if this helped you out and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials every week.